Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Kiana Holloman. How you doing, Kiana? Hi, Chief. I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. I'm I'm reporting live from Fort Eustis uh, and Langley Air Force Base, well, Fort Eustis Langley um, here in Virginia, uh, doing a chief chat on the road. So it's good to see you. And we got a, man, we got a, we got a big guest today. A major guest. I'm so, so excited. Yes. One, one of the goats of, of music, uh, a, a legend. Uh, without further ado, uh, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. So today's guest is a rock and roll hall of fame inductee, songwriters hall of fame inductee, and the co-founder of Chic. Additionally, he is a multiple Grammy award winning songwriter, composer, producer, arranger, and guitarist who has worked with such artists as Diana Ross, Madonna, David Bowie, Daft Punk, and many more. Most recently, he won a Best R&B Song Grammy for Beyonce's Cuff It and received a Recording Academy Special Merit Lifetime Achievement Award. He has also sold over 500 million albums and 100 million singles worldwide. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Niall Rogers. Hey. Uh, okay, I'll come out on the uh, we, we can hear you. Now we can, okay. oh, there, oh, you now. there you go. There you go. Uh, I'm not centered. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not weak. I'm not weak. So you wouldn't believe I was in the tech business. What's going on? Okay, here we go. There, we go. <laughs> there you go. Everything is looking good. How you doing? I'm really great, Chief. How you doing, brother? Oh, I can't complain. And man, it's it's such an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. And even her reading your intro, it felt like it was on a scroll or something, like it was rolling down the hallway because <laughs> you you had so many so many accomplishments. So it's just a pleasure and honor to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. And, and uh, can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from? Uh, so I have. Um, uh, I'm I'm in my apartment in Miami, Florida. Um, I ran in to do this uh, from the recording studio um, right down the street. Um, but yeah, I'm in Miami. Great weather today. I think we're like 91 degrees or something crazy. Um, oh my goodness! Well, but, listen, I I'm super jealous because uh, it's it's not 90 degrees in Virginia. I can tell you that. <laughs> But thank you so much again for for joining us. Oh, my now, pleasure. Congratulations on your Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. That is major. You gave a very emotional acceptance speech, and you mentioned a lot of people that you worked with. So, what was going on through your head when you were accepting your award and had learned that you earned it? So here's what happened. Um, I before I got up on that stage, I had said to myself. I'm gonna be tough. I'm just gonna be like a reporter and just give people the facts and just, and as soon as I thought of the beginning, how I started in this music business, I started to picture all the people who helped me get to where I am and I couldn't help it. The tears just started flowing and I was trying to keep it cool, but I I, I couldn't. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I started with a great, organization um sesame street and then i moved to the apollo theater house band and and then everything just started to snowball from there luther vandross was my boss and and then i became his boss because i got a bigger hit record and, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh and then it just i i just kept thinking about you know every i, I tried to pay tribute to everybody and I tried to do it real fast and I was just gonna be a professional. So I thought I was just gonna, you know, read the names, but I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you, you got an impressive list and uh, kind of when you were mentioning all the names and uh, accepting your speech, it kind of takes me back to uh, kind of 
how the military is a, it's a team team effort and we're all all working on a team and and we all know we can't get to a certain point in our lives uh you know by ourselves we can get we, we may be able to get there by ourselves but we absolutely need other folks around us to lift us up and uh you you've had a uh quite a, a village to to help you know get now to where he he is today so that's that's awesome and so you, you also received a Grammy for your. No, no, go ahead, sir. No, I was going to say, yeah, brother, you were right on the money. That's, uh, I mean, that that's what happened. That's why the tears were flowing because I just could see all those people, and I and I just thought to myself, I didn't want to let them down. Um, they gave everything to me, and I just tried to be there for them. And you know, and so many have passed away, and that was, you know. And that was the thing is that I, I was um, just thinking about their memories. And anyway, let's 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 keep it in the here yeah. and now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it light and uh, like. But I say you, uh, that that award was uh, w well deserved because you've impacted so many people. Uh, I can I can remember your music in the house uh, growing up on uh, Saturdays when we had to clean the house up, and my mama she was listening to to. Uh, man, she was listening to all types of music, uh, but definitely uh, ha had some chic up in there, some freak freak going on. <laughs> so, uh, but you, we let's talk about the you, the Grammy you won for your work in uh, Beyonce's Cuffit song, which uh, is basically a TikTok sensation. Everybody's doing the Cuffit dance and uh, your acceptance speech. You said this was the most organic thing that happened to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm sure Kiana's got it somewhere on our social media. Her and her girls and probably uh, got that. Got, hey, <laughs> hey, hold got on. The routine, the <laughs> somewhere, but, but, but you said you said it was a super organic kind of uh, just collaboration with with the dream and, and Beyonce. And so uh, which is a huge, huge uh, compliment considering all the people you work with. So what made that song so special to you? So, so what happened was um, I, I, uh, I walked into the Sony office and, and uh, there were three songs that, uh, that Beyonce wanted me to hear and just I would choose whichever one I wanted. And I listened to the three songs and, and, and something about Cuff It just hit me because it had that certain kind of R&B vibe where I you know where I come from, like just back, like old school, and and I knew that I could write a guitar part that would make the that the that would actually define the sections. And in today's world, a lot of R and B is made just from looping, and I um, I I didn't want to loop. I wanted to perform. So I, I just started playing and somehow naturally when it when the sections changed, I just knew what where I wanted to go. And what was great about this is first of all, you know, I and I and I and I say this from the bottom of my heart, Beyonce may be one of the nicest people that's ever walked this earth. Just she, she's just uh, an incredible uh, an incredible artist, star, but just, man, her, uh, her kindness, her politeness. And, and it was basically, you know, my instruction was just be Nile. <laughs> and, and that's all I did. I just was me. And, and when you listen to the record, you'll hear that my part develops just like old school R&B records. And that's what was so natural about it. I just played and you know some people are not musically sophisticated where they uh oh i think i think we may have lost them no that is so cool oh. that beyonce is super nice though not that i didn't think she wouldn't be nice i mean she's a virgo but <laughs> that's just me <neat. laughs> no that is that is, that is very refreshing to hear because sometimes you hear about artists behind the scenes and they're, they're not as nice as they kind of portray themselves to be. But, I, I, you know, Beyonce just got that vibe anyway. She's just got a, yeah. a vibe about her and she kind of floats, floats 
in air. Like it's 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 kind of <laughs> she got that mystique, but but that the swag at the same time. So uh, yeah, yeah now it's just work. He's worked with so many, you know, superstars. It's you know it, and for him to be to be able to come in there and basically say, "You pick which one you want," and and we'll go from there. No, you, know, you gotta have you gotta have some street cred. You gotta have some street cred to do that. So. Yeah, I mean, he became Luther Vandross's boss, so <laughs> that's pretty major right there. Thank you. And, and, and we talking <laughs> about, we're talking about big, we talking about big yeah. Luther too, not not a little Luther. So it was. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that no, but so Luther Vandross, Luther Vandross was probably one my mom's favorite R and B artist. Uh, you know that I heard more Luther Vandross than I heard any other R and B uh, in the household. So, yeah, just the fact you that know. he kind of came up under Luther, and then and then he he kind of spawned off into something just you know awesome. Agreed. No, in my house it was Patty Labelle, Miss Patty Patty. My mom was, was upset. Yes, obsessed with Patty Labelle. Hey, mom, but yeah, she loves <laughs> Patty Labelle. <laughs> exactly, For exactly. Sure. She got, so Patty, because like, I was when you said Patty Labelle, I thought about her patty pies. I don't know if you did. You see yes. that the, the guy, the guy that was talking about patty pies, he started singing, singing, and mm -hmm. he was just <laughs> eating her, eating her sweet potato pie. Yeah, yeah, that, yes, that's awesome. That was awesome. Back in the days. Yeah, love Patty Labelle. But yeah, we, we are we are uh, we're trying to we're trying to uh, get get Niles back on the on the chat for those that are watching. But we we appreciate y'all for for checking in with us. But yeah, we have a a legend in in music that that is you know he he started off with Chic and he's collab with David Bowie and Beyonce and Duran Duran. Yeah. I mean the, the list goes on and on. So man, we you know we we are fortunate and blessed to, to be able to. You know, talk to someone that has has progressed in life to this point. I think, he, and I think he was seventy years old. He and he don't look he don't look seventy no. at all. I'm like, no. And speaking of legends, so George Clinton has a interview out right now with um, Drink Champs, and George Clinton is like eighty one years old. So like, just all these different legends just being celebrated right now is amazing, and so super. You know. Amazing for us to have Niall Rogers on today, so to honor him. Yeah. And I just want to mention absolutely. Emily's in the chat. She says hi, Chief and Kiana from the beach. And I want to say, Emily, I am crashing your office. I didn't tell you I was going to be in here, but it's the Kiana takeover today, and I'm going to put everything back like I found it. <laughs> <laughs> tell, yeah, Emily yeah, tell Emily quit bragging from the beach. Yeah, tell Emily quit bragging from the beach. Hey, how you doing? All right. I lost you for a second. Yeah, yeah. No, we listen. We just had a whole concert, a Nile Rogers concert, while you were gone. Uh, we, had, <laughs> <laughs> we we had Kiana. She was singing, and I was back here, fake playing a guitar. Oh, okay. So I heard <laughs> you guys talking about um, Luther and Patty Labelle. Believe it or not, when I used to work for Luther. The first show that he ever took me to was the Apollo to see Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells. I mean, we were, wow. I, I think I was 17, 17, 18 years old. Oh, that's, that is you, you, crazy. You see, you see how God works? You see how that works? It just, we're talking about the two folks, and, and that's his, you said first concert? Yeah, it was the first, well, the first one Luther took me to. I've, I've okay. been into music since I was a child, but yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first, uh, yeah, Luther took us all. He treated us because he had um, he, he uh, had done the arrangements um, for David Bowie's Young Americans. Uh, he had written a song called um, Fascination, and he also wrote a song for the Wiz. Uh, Everybody reach up because the sun is shining just for us. So he wrote that song, Can You Feel a Brand New Day? So Luther had money and we didn't. So he took us to the Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, those, those are two. Uh, those those are two are probably the the best voices that I've heard in, in my lifetime. But between yeah. Luther and Patti LaBelle, it's a uh, man. It you know I'm I'm gonna go back. I was listening to you all morning. Uh, your your songs now, Rogers. Now now this afternoon, I'm I'm gonna give Luther and Patty some love. Yeah. <laughs> 
But now speaking of more artists you've worked with, you've worked with Keith Urban, Jeff Beck, B-52s, Michael Bolton, just to name a few. So as a producer, how do you approach working with artists who have such different styles? Um, the thing I do is I study their musical history. I listen to um, everything that's brought them to where they are. And then I try, so, so this is how I look at it, and I could be wrong, but I believe that sort of spiritually and artistically, everyone, we're all on, a, on an artistic arc. And I want to be the next level of development on that arc. I don't want to go backwards and I don't want to stay the same. So uh, after I just sort of conceive that, whatever that is, and I picture that in my mind, I then try and make every artist next record. I don't always get it right, but when I get it right, um, usually I make the biggest record of their careers. So I've made the biggest records of Duran's career, Duran Duran, the biggest record of Madonna's career, the biggest record of Diana Ross's career, biggest record of Bowie's career, and, and so on. A lot of them. I did the film Coming to America, and that wound up being huge. It was my first, you know, very big orchestral classical score. And I've done quite a few films, but that was my sort of you know, coming out party. And, you know, just when when I could look at Eddie Murphy's career at that time, and, and then I said to myself, well, I don't want to just serve the movie. I wanted to serve Eddie because he was my friend. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, you know, so that's, that's how I do it. I, I'm trying to overly simplify it because I'm a uh, typical artist I'm more complicated than I should be um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like um, always people always say I'm a really great song and I always, bro I'm a song rewriter because I never get it right the first time I get it right hopefully down the road um, because I write and I write and I try and you know I try and have a vision and I try and stay on that path oh yeah and, and you mentioned coming to america that's that's de that's my favorite movie of all times and uh that's one that i got teased about yeah but <laughs> coming to america i got teased about coming to america because i got a striking resemblance to daryl uh with yeah. the curl so if i just had a curl and what? um yeah so I, <laughs> so I, 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 my call sign's been so glow for most of my military career so they they, I'll, I'll get the theme music every once in a while. I think I went to a store in Luke and they actually played the Soul Glow theme music as I walked in. So it's uh, it, it's carried with me for, for a long time. <laughs> when, when, I, when, I wrote, when I wrote Soul Glow, um, honestly, everybody in the studio were on the floor crying, laughing. Um, <laughs> and it was, and, and imagine, um, well, any, anyway, that, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Nile Rogers wrote the theme song to my life. He, man, we putting that out there, Kiana. Thank you. Yeah, sir. I appreciate on. you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> your, day, your, day, your Jerry curl, huh? You know, I I actually had a Jerry curl when I wrote Soul Glow. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish we had a prepare. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have do you do you have anybody on your collaboration bucket list anybody that you haven't worked with because you work with so many different folks um well at the at the grammys the other day i i ran into lizzo and i most people don't know that i started out on the flute that was my first instrument so she was one of the few people who really understood how difficult it was for me as a child because I was born with asthma and my school, they assigned me the open hole flute. And I, I said that to Lizzo and she said, open hole flute, and you had asthma? You must have been like dying. I said, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, and we just laughed. And I said to her that I, I want to work with her on the next record. And, and then I apologized to her because when she got signed to Atlantic, which is the same label that she was on, um, the head of the label came to me and said, you know, I have this new artist, Lizzo. Um, 
and I was really interested in her, but I was committed to someone else and I couldn't get to it. And I just said, you know, I want to try and make up for that. And I respect you. And, you know, so I would say Lizzo is who I really want to work with. That's awesome. So along with performing, producing, and writing, you're also the chairman of the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So what has it been like to advocate for other songwriters, especially in this era of streaming? It's It's been an honor and a challenge, and we are slowly getting to where I would like us to be. You know, most people don't realize this, but songwriters haven't had a, a raise for 75 years everybody else in the performing arts business and you know you know the film writers um, authors everybody has made more money over time but songwriters we still get paid the same thing that we got paid 75 years ago and the fact of the matter is is that there would be no music business if it weren't for composers and songwriters like you buy songs you don't buy motifs you don't buy just a little lick you know like yeah i may have written oh I freak out but there had to be a whole song to go on, along with it you know i you, you you're just not going to buy a song that just goes good times where's the rest of the song <laughs> it's like uh you, you know so uh it, it's and, and and the problem with it is that we love what we do so, you know it's it's been it's been a difficult fight to try and um just get us um i, I mean you know look Every every time I talk about this, if I'm in a room full of people, I say, okay, raise your hand if you believe that songwriters are overpaid <laughs> and not one hand goes up because everyone knows in the business that we're way undercompensated. Um, so by being, um, you know, not only the chairman of the Songwriters Hall of Fame, but also uh, with my other responsibilities and the other things that I do, um, we're really advocating for songwriters and we're slowly but surely getting there. So hopefully, you know, in my lifetime, it will have, you know, proper equity. No, absolutely. And uh, that, that's, that's another, you know, wonderful thing you're doing is kind of paying it forward, forward to the future uh, songwriters uh, coming up for the next generation and kind of speaking of paying it forward, you're also a, a co-founder of the We Are Family uh, Foundation. So can you let us know yes. about your, what your organization is doing and, and, and the work it's doing for the community? Yes. Yeah, so we support young people around the world who are uh, who are change leaders, who are working um, on some of the most incredible uh, solutions to problems that we have in this world. and. And I cannot tell you how proud I am. Uh, three of my friends were in the very first plane that was crashed into the World Trade Center. I mean, to, can you imagine that? Three people I knew were in that very first airplane. <clears throat> and um, because I'm a musician, I've traveled all around the world. I didn't wanna start a charity that was based on hate and revenge and blah, blah, blah. I, I said, you know, I wanted to, to have a charity that was based on understanding and trying to get people to understand that we're all basic, we all basically want the same thing. And when I, when I first started, um, I was looking for these young change makers and I'm now overwhelmed because I've, now I have, like, I don't have children of my own you know, but now I have hundreds of children. They all call me their G dad, which stands for global dad, because we're a global organization. Um, I have kids from every country and every continent other than Antarctica. So, um, you know, m my kids are amazing. And um, they, they just, they're, they're, they really are changing the world. They've already had such positive effects on local governments and, and you know in curriculums and uh, one of my kids um, came up with an early test for one of the most deadly forms of cancer pancreatic cancer for 15 dollar test right like this kid wow. <laughs> came up 
you know, and I have many kids that work for uh, the Bill Gates Foundation. Um, a young kid that we had uh, is now one of the top astrophysicists in the world. I met him when he was 14 years old, and he um, he's now challenged Einstein's theory of relativity. And believe it or not, the scientific community cannot dis though um, what he's come up with. He's saying, Einstein almost had it right. <laughs> this is really mm -hmm. what's right. And I mean, like, I mean, come on, this this dude is like a monster. He's killing it. He's, he's wonderful. And, you know, and we gave him, we basically amplified his voice because he um, he's autistic and he didn't speak for many years. And what I did was I, uh, we are Family Foundation. One of our programs is TEDx Teen. And I had him be the opening speaker. And his mother couldn't believe it. She's like, you're going to have him open it up and you're going to have him talk to a room full of strangers? I said, yeah, I believe in him that much. And he went out there and he killed it. That's awesome. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. great. And now, so speaking of being a global dad, your ears are always to the streets and you're so active on social media. So where can we find out more about your work, all your causes, and just keep up with all things Nell Rogers? So I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm a two-time cancer survivor. And um, so uh, I, I was uh, doing a bunch of shows that year and I think we were, uh, that particular year, we were hired to be the man uh, for the Emmys or the Oscars. I can't remember. It was one of the big award shows, and um, and I did my first post because I didn't I didn't understand social media, and all of a sudden, more than two hundred thousand people responded. I was like, whoa! So uh, <laughs> then I started a website, uh, nilerogers dot dot com. But I find that that um, if you just type in Nile Rogers on any social media platform, you'll find me. I don't, you know, I, I, I do my own, um, yeah, I, I do my own messages. I do my own post. Um, I, you know, so it's easy to find out what I'm doing. I'm, I hide out in the open. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. No, and and now I, I and, and like I said, I appreciate you. I know you uh, kind of broke away from the studio to do this interview, and and, and we don't want to we don't want to keep you from that creative process. But I just I just want to personally <laughs> say uh, thank you for for spending uh, a little time with us. And and you talk about Beyonce being the nicest human being that that you you've met or whatever the case may be. But man, you 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 must be a close number two because man, you you just have a really warm spirit. Uh, we had some technical difficulties even before we started. You were calm and patient, and just uh, we we just couldn't ask for a better better guest uh, to to just you know vibe out with for the past thirty minutes. So just I just want to thank you so much for your time and and, and the contributions you made to the world because uh, you you you're paying it forward. You, you're advocating for songwriters. You got the We Are Family where where you're you're literally tackling all these different world issues and. All while you're doing that, you're, you're you're making the greatest hits for everybody, including me and Kiana. We could we might we might be ready for our greatest hits at some point in our life. So so we at least we know what to call. But man, you just yeah. you just you just uh, brother, you just uh, you, you're doing a, a lot of great work in the world, and, and we just really appreciate you. Thank oh, man, thank you so much. I um I, I feel like such a lucky uh, person. Like I said, a two time cancer survivor. And both times, um, you know, doctors were really overly concerned uh, that uh, I might not make it. And, uh, you know, and that was 11 years ago. So I, at least I've made it 11 more years. So it's cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not going to blur out your age, but uh, you, you don't look anywhere, whatever your age is, which I know the age and, you know, our viewers have to go Google it or something. But, man, you you got a preservation. I don't know if it's cocoa butter. I don't know if it's the water you're drinking. I don't know what it is. But, uh, man, keep keep up the regimen and share, share that with the world, too. I uh, Unfortunately, what it is, I have crazy oily skinny skin. 
uh, uh, and and I'm skinny too, but I have oily skin, <laughs> and everybody says, um, you know, maybe that's why I look younger. I mean, look, I know you, you can tell I'm 70 years old, um, but the thing is, is that uh, just go, you know, look up one of our shows. I I, I still think I'm 17. I, we put on a show now um, that has more energy and obviously way more hits than when I first started. Um, it, it, just a couple of days ago, we were playing uh, in Vail. Right before that, we played Jamaica, the country of Jamaica, not Jamaica, Queens. Um, uh, right before, and these are all just within a few days. I'm, I'm here in Miami. We're doing a festival um, next week. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I'm a new school musician. Everything we play is live. We're still, you know, we're like, uh, you know, like the bands you would hear in church. We, we just, we just play and sing our hearts out. And I honestly feel that I am more energetic now at seventy, and that our shows are better, um, just because I have way, way, way more hits than people realize you know i'm the guy in the background so they don't know you know i'm they don't realize how many um hit records i have and just to get them in a show <laughs> it keeps me young just, yeah. just playing all that stuff i'm like going man this is my exercise the the other day we were contracted for a 90 minute show we played more than two and a half hours and all the songs are you know top five or number one records and and at the end of two and a half hours, people are I'm like, going, yo, guys, <laughs> we just played 20 something songs and you want more? Come on. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I just feel blessed. And, you know, and, and music, it, it's just I think the music is what keeps me young. I feel like I said, I feel like I'm 17, not 70. No, no, you listen, you need a month long set for the amount of hits that you got in the world. So uh, and and uh, I think like the old saying is, if you if you if you don't use it, you lose it. So you you continue to use that gift and you continue to go out there, get on the road. And uh, and, and that's why you look so young and you can move around that stage. And and, and we just uh, appreciate it and, and love. And, and I can't wait for you to come to Dallas at some point so we can try to catch you in Dallas as well. Because uh, that's what that's why. Oh, yeah, bro. No, no. Hey, man, Chief, we are we're we're already uh, yeah we're already booked in Dallas. And uh, matter of fact, you'll have a blast because uh, you you can expand your horizons. We'll be there with Duran Duran and uh, and Bastille, and it's a, it's, it's going to be an incredible show. It's like oh, I yeah, said, yeah. we no, no. we're old school. We just want the audience dancing and going crazy right from the very first song, and that's what we do. Absolutely. Well, I, well, I can't wait because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely there. And um, before I let you leave, I just want to let you know that uh, uh, just thanking you again. And I want to give you a token uh, of appreciation from me. Uh, in the military, we call it a military challenge coin, and uh, we, we give uh -huh. this out to folks that are we give this folks out to folks that are doing outstanding work and, and, and recognizing uh, our, our airmen or our troops uh, as they do great work. And I just want to. Uh, let's get. I'll reach out to your team to get get a good address for you and and to send this to you. But uh, this is just a small token of my appreciation for what you do uh, for for giving us some time today. So thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. No, no problem at all. And 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 we appreciate your time. I know you uh, a, a busy man, and we appreciate you uh, being patient uh, as we as we kind of navigate through all the technical difficulties. But. But you're, you say you're an IT guy anyway, so you you will figure it out. So, <laughs> so we appreciate it. All righty, man. You take care. Peace. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Chief Chat out. Thank you.